Hey everybody, it's Sam here again with 3D Printing Canada. Today I'm going to take some time and show you how to set up your new Creality printer using the Creality Print slicing software. We do always like to recommend that when you first start using your printer, stick with the slicing software that the company made to go with it. it makes everything easier, everything's pre-configured for you so you can get up and printing really quickly. So, no reason to delay, let's head over to the computer. So we're at the computer and we are going to start out by opening a web browser, whichever one you would like. I personally like to use Google Chrome and we're just going to go ahead and Google Creality Print Download. The first hit that should come up is going to be the 3D Printer Slice software. You can go ahead and click on that link there. It will take you to the official Creality Downloads page. From here, we are going to have to go and when we hover over support, scroll down software and firmware until we get to software download. This is where we're gonna find the installation files for the Creality Print software that we need to get. Go ahead and select whichever one is most appropriate for the computer that you are using. There are tons of tutorials on downloading and installing applications. Feel free to follow along with one of those if you need any help. Uh, once it's downloaded, follow through the prompts and you're gonna be able to go ahead and open up Creality Print. There it is. I did skip over one little step. You're gonna have to select your language and your region of the world that you are in. Make sure you select the ones that are appropriate to you so that you're getting the correct information and you can understand what it's giving you. Next, it's going to take you to this prompt to add a printer. If this is your first printer and your first time installing, this is what you're gonna see. If you already have some, there is another way to do that. I'll show you in just a moment. All right, so we're going to be installing a CR series printer today. It's the CR10 SE. So we go ahead, click on CR series, and it happens to be the first option. They do have all of the previous models. So if you've got an older model, go ahead and select whichever is appropriate for you. And we click add. Now it's going to prompt us to select the nozzle size. This particular model of printer only has the one size nozzle available. That happens to be the same size that was pre-installed from the factory, which is 0.4. So you can go ahead and click OK. And there we go. Our printer is now installed and we're going to be able to get some files that we can go ahead and start printing. So my favorite place to get any files that we want to start printing with is actually Thingiverse. I've been going there for years. It's got all of the files that I need for basically anything that I need to print. And we will go ahead and get that one open there. So this is your Thingiverse homepage. It gives you the most popular, most recent print files right there on the homepage. You can go ahead and search in the search box up here and you can search for whatever it is you would like. If you're looking for calibration models, if you're looking for flower pots, if you're looking for desk organizers, I went ahead and cheated a little bit. I already know what I wanna print, so I recorded the thing number earlier. This is also a great tool. If your friends are sending you stuff, you can just ask them for the number to get to the right thing. So you type in the number of the thing that you're looking for, and go ahead and do your search and here it is. This is the birdhouse that we're going to be doing today. So when you click right in the center of the picture, it takes you to the thing page. You're gonna see that they've got photos usually demonstrating the print, this particular birdhouse. I get to upcycle some of my old CDs to use as the bottom. I've got about a thousand of them. Um, it also includes a print file for you to print the base if you don't have a thousand old CDs kicking around. So as we scroll down, we're gonna to get to see the details. Usually the designer's given us some information about why they designed this, how they designed it. Uh, they'll often recommend some printing parameters, but I don't see them on this one. That's okay, we're just gonna to stick to defaults today anyway. So when we go over to the files tab, we have the option of downloading all files. This will download them as a zip file that you can then extract to use the files or you can download them as individuals. Since I only need the birdhouse file, I'm only going to download that first one. So I click on download and there it is. It's popped up in my completed downloads list. So we're ready to head back over to the slicing software.
All right, so we're back over to Creality Print so that we can prepare our file. So let's go over to this menu strip on the left-hand side, and this is where you're going to find all of the options for getting your model the way that you want it to be. So you can either open a model from Creality Print, they do have some fantastic models on there, some of them are free, some of them are paid, or you can go ahead and open a file from your local computer. That's what we're going to do today because I downloaded it already a couple of times apparently. So we're going to head and go ahead and open up our birdhouse model here. So it's dropped it right on the build plate for us. You can see the entire model and now it's time to make sure that it's where we want it to be so that we can make sure we're getting a nice good clean print on it. So I'm going to start off with this first option here with the four arrows and that gives us the option to move the model anywhere we want to on the build plate. In this particular slicing software, your centered position is the halfway point of the build plate. So on a 220 by 220 bed, 110, 110 is your XY coordinates. You always want to make sure that your Z coordinate is set to zero. That's what's going to start it printing right on the build plate, not trying to print in dead air a few millimeters above it. After that, we've got our scaling tool. This is what we would use if we wanted to change the size of the birdhouse. Because I do plan to upcycle my CDs, I don't want to play around with the size. I want to make sure that they fit. Uh, this is where we can rotate the model. Sometimes it drops on the build plate in a really funny configuration. It'll drop upside down, sideways, backwards, stuff like that. This is how you can turn it to the way that you want it to be. We also have the option here to put the bottom of the model right flat on the build plate or we could select which face we would like as the bottom if it's not automatically selected. This one seems to have fallen the right way, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that one alone today. This is our layout tool. If we had multiple items on the build plate, this is where we would want to go so that we can arrange them and try and get the best possible print configuration. Since it's just one model, not too important today, we'll get into that in another video. This is where we can add supports if we would like to to the model. In order to know whether or not you need them, you're going to want to right click on this build plate section and tilt your model around. Let's make sure that there isn't anything hanging too, too far out from the build plate that might fail or cause it to have some really funny behaviors while it's printing. This one looks okay. The worst angle that we have is this little ledge right here, and it seems to be coming up at a nice 45 degree angle, which pretty well all printers can handle without too much difficulty. So I'm going to go ahead and leave supports alone. The last option down here is all of the other things that you can do. You can do a little bit of model manipulation and modification from here. It's always best to do it through an actual CAD software, so we're going to leave all of those settings alone as well. So now we are able to, let's just deselect these two options. Now we're able to go into the actual slicing parameters to make sure that we are running this with the right materials, the right temperatures, and all the right configurations. So we're going to start by double checking that we are using the correct printer. If you only have one, this one's pretty bulletproof, but if you have multiple printers, always double check that you've got the correct model selected. Things can go wrong if you don't. Uh, the next thing that we're going to get to is our materials section here. So by default, it's going to think that you're running Hyper PLA, that is Creality's brand. We can't blame them for that, but I'm going to go ahead and switch it to generic PLA. This is a great all around setting if you're using anything other than Creality brand PLA, and it gives you really good print results. After that, we're going to go down to the actual parameters options. So by default, they give you two options. There's high quality and there's normal quality. High quality is for when you want that really fine level of detail on your prints and you want to make sure that you can get the best possible details in all of those small little things that you're doing. This is a fairly big print, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with normal. Usually I find normal works really, really well. It's got a very good middle ground between getting that great quality and also great print times. The other two things that we've got in this dialog box here is we have the option of adding a custom profile if we want to. That's not something that we need to worry about right now because we're going to stick with the defaults and get used to how it's working. The other thing you can do is you can edit the parameters. That one's not going to be necessary today either. This is a fairly simple model. That's why we picked it as our first print. So we're going to go ahead and click the slice button. 
So now it's generating the G code file. G code is the actual information that your 3D printer is able to read. It's what tells it where to move the print head, how much filament to extrude, when to extrude the filament, and all of that necessary important information. So the first thing that we're going to notice is it's popping up and saying the model has not been supported. We did already review that, so I can go ahead and close out. We're just going to dismiss that for now. So we have our G-Code preview box. This is one of the most useful tools that it gives you. It tells you how long it's going to take to run your print, how much material you're going to need in both weight and in length, and it's going to give you a predicted material cost. Bear in mind, this number is only as accurate as the information you give it. If you haven't configured your material profile, it's likely to be inaccurate. I usually ignore it and manually configure it if I need to anyway. So now it's going to show us where all of our model printing time is going and everything looks fairly normal and reasonable to me. I'm fine with a three hour print time so I don't need to worry too much about that. So now I just need to get this file into a readable format for the printer. For this particular printer that means I'm going to export it to the USB drive that came with it. So when you click on export to local, it's going to open up this little dialog box for you. You can go ahead and change the name if you would like to. It tends to give really long file names. I'm not a huge fan of that. So I go ahead and shorten it down to just the name of the thing that I'm printing. Makes it much easier to find it on the screen of the printer. And then you go ahead and you scroll through this list. I've gone ahead and named the USB drive with the name of the printer. Again, that helps keep things straight when you start to get into a multiple printer environment. So you can go ahead and click on that and go ahead and click save. Now I already saved it once, so I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite my existing there. Not a problem. Once it finishes saving, it pops up with this other prompt for you that you can open the local folder. And I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I do want to open the local folder so that I can make sure that I'm able to properly eject the drive. And there it is. So I again scroll down through the list to the drive that I need, right click and eject. All right, so we are all finished. I have completed my first print with my CR10 SE using Creality Print software. Popped right off the bed, nice and clean and perfect, and now I get to give it to the kids so they can decorate it for the birds. As usual, thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoy the videos. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, you can post them in the comments section, or don't forget to check out our forum at 3dprintingspace.com. We'll see you next time.